door, and you, if you went over to the left, they had a typing center. Okay, so it was a room, and this is early. You know, this is like when I first got there in, in 85. And you go in this room, and they had 20 or so IBM Selectric typewriters with the little ball that goes around like that. And um, uh, uh, that was always full, because people had to type their term paper. You know, they, didn't, they were on campus, and they had to type their term paper. Um, uh, by 1989, people had PCs and printers. So, so the IBM Selectrics in there were replaced with IBM P PCs. <laughs> so you had PCs and printers in there. And you know, some of us had our own PC, but we didn't have a printer, you know, because printers were expensive. Print car, you know, um, print cartridges were expensive and stuff like that. So um, they had these, you know, those big giant printers which are about this big with tractor fed and the, you know, the dot matrix thing going up and down. So I, I would go in there more to print stuff for a class than I would to actually literally type a paper. How did you print stuff then? If you, you, know, you, you didn't have email, right? Right. Well, we brought things in on a five and a quarter disk, okay? Floppy disk, and we'd pop it in there, mm -hmm. and we were always told, you know, um, make sure that you restart the computer before, you know, because somebody could have left a disk with a virus in there. You never knew. But we would take our paper on a five and a quarter floppy, pop it in there, you know, open up, um, word perfect, you know, 5.1 <laughs> or something like that, and we would print our document so we could turn it into class, okay? Um, so yeah, I printed things more, I think, than wrote things. Um, the upstairs of the, uh, upstairs of sub one had, um, mostly student services. I remember the dean for student services, Ken Baumgartner's office was up there in the corner and then there was, I can't remember everything. The no, the registrar, I don't remember the registrar, that's a good question. Registrar, I don't think he was in Krug Hall, but they would set up Krug Hall for um, registration, which I, which we could actually talk about now. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't remember where the registrar's office was, but when it was registration time, um, they would set up, the registrar's office would set up a registration site. All registration was in person in the 1980s, okay? So depending on how many courses you had, then you had your priority Okay, so there would be days, and you'd look in the course schedule, and it would say, okay, if you have 32 credit hours, you show up on Thursday at 3 o'clock. Okay, so you would go, and um, uh, I forgot how they could tell where you were, but you would just get in line at that particular point, and you would wait to go, <laughs> to snake through Krug Hall, okay, to the upper room, where they had a room with a bunch of people who would, see the next person and look at your sheet and see if they had it. They had computers, but only they had computers. <laughs> you had to fill out cards. So you always filled out like 10, 20 possible courses to see which, to, to get the four or five that you wanted. Um, the lines were so long that they went from the second floor down to the first floor, down to the basement of Krug, and then through the tunnel, and then up into the West Building. Okay, interesting. Um, so that was the first time I ever saw the tunnel. And back then the tunnel had, there was, um, there was literally a sign in the tunnel that said fallout shelter with the radioactive thing in it. Um, so that was re really, really interesting.